we are now starting to look at solutions. A solution by definition is a homogeneous mixture. This includes a lot of things. We can have a solid in a solid like a brass or stainless steel. We can have a gas in a gas like air. We can have a solid in liquid like salt water. We can have a liquid in liquid like vodka. So as long as we have a homogeneous mixture is by definition a solution. In solutions, we call one component to be the solvent. That is typically the main component. Then all the minor components are called solutes. So we need at least one of them, and there could be many hundreds or even thousands of components inside a solution. If we have water as a solvent, then we can call that an aqueous solution. And that's the types of solutions that we work with mostly in this class are aqueous solutions. Concentration of solutions can vary because it's a mixture and concentration of the mixtures vary. So we can have a, a weak coffee or a strong coffee. So we can call that uh, in qualitative terms, dilute or concentrated. We like to make things quantitative, uh, put a number on it. So we have a variety of ways that we put numbers onto concentrations. Um, we're gonna be starting off with molarity. Molarity is moles of solute per liters of solution. One of the ones that we need for our colligative properties is molality. That's moles of solute per kilograms of solvent. So molality is a little odd one that uh, we're dividing by the solvent, not by the total solution. Mole fraction, moles of component that we're interested in, divided by total moles. And I'm not saying solute up here because uh, where we will be using this, we're often using, um, going after the mole fraction of the solvent itself. For commercial products, we generally use uh, percents. So mass percent, mass of solute, or mass of solution times 100%. Volume percent and volume of solution, solute over volume of solution times 100%. Mass volume percent, mass of solute per volume of solution times 100%. And when we do this, uh, we generally do uh, grams per ml because those are similar size masses and volumes. And in commercial products, they often don't tell us what type of percent they're using. But the general rule is that solids are done in mass and liquids are done in volume. So let's look at molarity first. So this is moles of solute per liters of solution. Uh, we write it as capital M for molarity. And whenever we use that capital M, you know, comes after a number, we can replace that capital M with moles per liter. So we can watch our units cancel off. So molarity is moles divided by volume in liters. We can rearrange this and get molarity times volume gives us moles. And in this case, the volume has to be liters. And this is why chemists look like molarity because it gives us moles. And when we do our reactions, we care about how many moles are present. Sure, we will have to convert moles into grams to weigh things out on a scale, but moles to the primary unit that we use in uh, our stoichiometry calculations. So let's do some problems for molarity. So if we have 25 milliliters of pentane, C5H12, the density is 0.63 grams per ml. We add on 45 milliliters of hexane, C6H14, density of 0.66 grams per ml. We're telling us that the volumes add, so our 25 plus 45 is 70. That's not always true. Uh, and we're asking for the molarity of pentane. So we're looking for the moles of the pentane divided by total liters of solution. So we have to calculate moles of pentane. So volume times density will give us our mass of pentane, 15.75 grams, divided by its molar mass. 72.15 is 0.218 moles of the pentane. 
We've always said that our volumes add to uh, 70 mLs, that's 0 0.070 liters. So our moles divided by our liters will give us 3.1 molarity of pentane. The other way that we might do it, we know how many moles that we need, and we have a concentration, so we have to figure out what volume we need at that concentration to give us the that mole. So if we want 0.25 moles of sodium hydroxide, we have a 1.5 molarity solution. What volume do we need to give us those 0.25 moles? So we're going to take our molarity times volume is moles, solve for our volumes, we get moles over the molarity. So 0.25 moles over the 1.5 molarity, and I wrote the capital M as moles per liter. So we see our moles are going to cancel off, the liter is going to be the answer. So we end up with 0.167 liters, that's a valid answer here. And uh, sometimes we want to see it in milliliters, so it's 167 milliliters. So let's uh, look at another one. So uh, for some of the collective properties we'll be looking at before the end of the chapter here, we have to know the concentration of ions in solution. So in this case, we have 1.5 molarity of calcium chloride. What's the concentration of chloride in solution? Well, we have our 1.5 molar calcium chloride, so we're going to multiply by the ratio of how many chlorides are in the calcium chloride. And as we see, there are two chlorides in the calcium chloride, so we're multiplying by the ratio of two over one, and gives us 3.0 molarity of chloride ions in the solution. Another type of calculation that we need to do, we know the volume and concentration of solution that we want to make, we have to go to the scale and weigh out the mass of the solute to add to that solution. So in this case, we want 400 ml of a 1.1 uh, molarity solution of calcium chloride. So our first step is to calculate the moles that we need. So our molarity, I replace that capital M with the moles per liter. I turn my milliliters into liters, so the liters cancel. And we need 0 0.440 moles of calcium chloride. Now we multiply that by the molar mass of calcium chloride, and we end up with 48.8 grams of calcium chloride. So we weigh this out, dissolve it in enough solution to make 400 ml, and that will be our 1.1 molarity solution. Another way that we make solutions is by dilution. We take a portion of a concentrated solution, add more solvent to make a less concentrated solution. So the equation for that is M1V1 equals M2V2. Does M1V1 give us moles of the solute? So we take a portion of the concentrated solution, we have set moles, as we add solvent to it, we're increasing the volume, decreasing the concentration, but the moles remains constant. And in this, the equation here, the volume, units for volume just need a match. We don't have to make it liters, it just needs to match. So down here we have 45 ml of 0.605 molarity nickel sulfate solution. We dilute it down to 300 ml, what's our final concentration? So we take our equation M1V1 equals M2V2, solve for concentration, M2 equals M1 times V1 over V2. We put in our concentration, 0.605 molarity. Our volumes, 45 ml over 300 ml. So we see in this case that ml is going to cancel. Our answer is going to be coming out in terms of molarity, what we're looking for. We run this through our calculator, and we end up with a molarity of 0 0.0908 molarity. So another direction that we go, if we're trying to make a solution, so in this case, we want to make a one liter of a 1.25 molarity nitric acid solution. We have some 2.5 molarity nitric acid solution. What volume do we need to dilute it down to make this one liter of 1.25? So we take our equation M1V1 equals M2V2, solve for volume. So V1 equals V2 times M2 over M1. So our volume is one liter. So I put in liter, so we're going to get liters back out. Molarity divided by, by molarity will cancel off. We see that we need half a liter, 0 0.500 liters. And that is the valid answer. And if we need it in mLs, that's 500 mLs.